Are you ready to hop to it this morning, sir? Nope, but I'm ready to go hunt some lionfish. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every single time Joe gets some keto bricks and I don't, you'll be alerted to what it. What do you mean? Where's my keto bricks? You don't I see get any. eggs on, on my plate and eggs on your plate, but no keto bricks on my plate. That's because I have something special for you. You do? Yeah. I made you... A little yogurt parfait. Oh my lord, and it's got whipped cream on it, so we in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, good morning. Good morning. I am going lionfish hunting today. Are you going hunting or are you going catching? I I'm hoping to go killing is what I'm hoping to do. <laughs> Wow, that's a bold statement. So I am going diving uh, with uh, this person from the shop. She's she's actually an instructor, but she doesn't live down here. She lives, I think it's in South Carolina, and she is one of Hugh's former students. He actually trained her to be an instructor. Wow. And uh, we're going to go out on the reefs, and I'm specific. It's just a fun dive, but I'm going to go hunting. I just want to go hunting. No wreck diving today, just the two of us, you know, going down along the reef, and she's going to bring her camera. Okay. And uh, you're going to find some lionfish. I'm, I'm hoping to find some lionfish. Lobster season gone uh, until the fall, but uh, we can kill all the lionfish we want. Even Sounds if they're so violent. Babies. Even if they're babies, you're allowed to kill the babies. Well. But I'm going to bring them all home whether they're babies or not. They're Even invasive. though you're not going to get a lot of meat. They're an invasive species. Yeah. Here, here on the East Coast, they are invasive. Everybody stop releasing... Your, your aquarium tanks into the ocean yeah. or in the rivers and lakes. Because there's no no natural predator for them here. So you can eat them. Uh, if they sting you, you're going to have a really bad day. Mm -hmm. um, but there are ways around that. But the meat itself is not poisonous or anything. So um, Hugh told me he likes to kill them and feed them to the eels. They're trying to get some of the local like eels and to stuff have like a that taste for to them. have a taste for them that makes sense but i just want to bring them home because we really want to eat some of the lionfish so even though where we're going we're probably not going to see really big ones we're going to see the smaller ones whatever they are i'm going to bring them home if i can catch them or, I just, or kill them i just want to taste them because i've never tasted them before so we go for them with a spear gun it's it's like a butterfly sling look at us You'd have a bad day if that went through you. Yeah. Right? It's got these little barbs on there. Very pointy. Like, pull like this and shoot it. So, right. so we're having some breakfast. We're going to do a full day of eating. Today is a, uh, a a food day, right? I guess a feast day is what we're going to call it. Yeah. Um, so we have a video coming out. Not sure if this is going to come out before or after that video about what we've been doing differently. Because people have commented, well, you guys have lost weight. What are you doing differently? We have. We're still eating. Yeah. <laughs> and we're... <laughs> and you're going to see News today... Flash. We're still eating and we're still eating keto. Yeah, we're still eating keto. That's never going away. No. You know, that is never going away. Uh, I know it's hard for some people to believe, but we've never had an off-plan day. In, in the five plus years that I've been keto... Um, the only time I ever had an off-plan day was about six months in because at the time I was not planning on staying keto right. for the rest of my life. And it was Christmas and I decided to have a very small piece of pie and some macaroni and cheese and I was sick for a week and that was where Instant I made regret. the decision to go, yeah, I'm never eating that stuff Again, and I haven't. So I don't consider that an off-plan day because, at the, again, at the time I was like, 
I'm not doing this for the rest of my life. This was to lose weight. And like, I noticed health benefits, but I was like, what would be the harm if once in a while? Well, I learned what the harm was. Well, and I went keto 2.0. So like I, when I went off, so I started keto. And then when I didn't see those like results promised in the magazines, in the checkout line, you know, like 30 pounds in 30 days. Right. I, I'm like, that's it. I'm going completely no more keto. Go back to eating just oatmeal. And so when I came back in for keto 2.0, Joe was already well. Like he, you were much more like healthy in your body. Mm -hmm. And I had already seen you go through that, you know, non-keto food and right. be like totally sick. So I thought to myself, if we're going to do this, I need to go all in, right. you know, and I thought that that was really important. And then as we continue to go, you know, through our keto journey, it's changed and evolved as far as like what we have taste for now that maybe we didn't to begin with. But I feel so good in my body. I don't want to not feel good in my body. Does that make sense? Like right. that really helps me stay on track because like, I stuck to it because I had determination at the beginning that I wanted to support you and right. what you were doing and not undermine what you were doing. But now I feel great and I'm not like, you know what? I'd really like to feel terrible today. So let's go off. You know, like I just don't have those feelings or yeah. thoughts. And over the last five plus years, we've changed things. We've tweaked things. We've learned what works for us, what work doesn't work for us. We've tried different things Ooh, that's because good. that's what we do. And, you know, we have just found that tweaking one more thing has just all of a sudden changed everything for us. The video is going to be a little controversial, but please don't hate on us. It's working for us. What works for us may not work for you. No. But if you're like us and you were in a two-year stall, even though your diet was on point, you might want to try it. So... Again, don't know which one's coming out first, but I will leave a link for that up here, whether it comes out before or after. Uh, yeah, so on your eggs, I just put some of this. Oh my gosh. Here's my thing. Chili lime. When it comes to seasonings, there's no better seasoning than red red salt. They have so many different flavors now. Um, you know, you have the regular salt, which I would never tell anybody to use anything other than red real salt. Me neither. For so many reasons. Number one, a lot of the salt just the, 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 the salt with the umbrella girl uh, that you buy in the store, a lot of it has dextrose in it. Do, right. Why are we adding sugar to our salt? Don't understand that you one. You like your salt? Put some sugar in it. It'll a be even better. A lot of the pink Himalayan salt that we buy in the store isn't even real pink Himalayan salt. It's salt that's been colored pink to make you think it's pink Himalayan salt. And even if it was real stuff, why do you want something from halfway around the world when you can get a better quality at relatively the same price. Right here. That's coming right here from the United States. Yeah. Supporting United States workers, but more importantly, it's not flying halfway around the world where you're helping global warming. People talk about like, well, you know, meat is bad for the environment. So is eating salt from halfway around the world. Plus, I don't know what the working conditions are yeah. for the people there. So I don't want to contribute to something that may be not great. We have been inside of the mind of, of Redmond and uh, it's it's just amazing. So to me, they make the absolute best seasonings when it comes to barbecue. I would say 90% of the time we're using the Redmond organic garlic yeah. black pepper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the different flavors. And this chili lime goes great on eggs. And then, yeah, for breakfast, I said I'm having um, – Rachel's been melting these down. I like honestly just taking the brick. Yeah. I, and I know it sounds weird, but here's the thing. I like just – I can have a quarter of the brick or a half of the brick, and I'm fine with it. And then I just – oh, the brick will last me a couple of days. Rachel likes to melt them into pucks. I do. Because she doesn't want to eat the whole brick. My problem with the pucks – and this is going to sound so weird, right? This is going to sound so backwards. But you don't want the brick because you're like, I can't control myself and I'll eat the whole brick, right? For me – I don't know how much I'm eating with the pucks, and I will grab them like all day long. And oh. by the end of the day, I've eaten like 12 of them and probably eaten a whole brick. Whereas if I've got the brick itself in my hand, I'm probably I won't eat more than a half of it. But it's 
it's what works for you. Yeah, it's what works right? for you. So a lot of times I'll leave the pucks for Rachel and I'll eat the brick. Uh, but since I'm on my way out the door and I'm, I don't want to eat a lot because I'm going to go diving, um, I don't get, get seasick, but I also don't want to like try to get seasick. Don't tempt it. So this gives me some extra fat, plenty of energy for getting down below. Now, Rachel's having yogurt. But inside of it is this seven Sundays, which we filmed the review. I haven't released it yet. We found this in Costco. It's so good. First, we found it at the Costco in Utah. And then when we came home, we found out our local Costco has it. And this is like some of the cleanest ingredient keto cereal that I've seen. It's basically a combination of nuts and like there's some strawberries We just in use there. it as like a mix-in for um, creamies, but it's really great with yogurt. What an amazing day diving. I had so much fun today. It's probably one of my favorite dives that I've done this year. Uh, my friend Hugh, who runs Undersea Sports, sent me out because he couldn't go uh, with one of his ex-students, this woman named Carmen, and she was actually one of his students, and she is now an instructor, and she also takes people on dives at the aquarium that she works at up in, I believe it's South Carolina, where she takes people diving with like whale sharks and stuff. She was down here visiting and the two of us went out on the Black Pearl uh, out of Fort Lauderdale and South Florida diving and we had so much fun. We jumped in and we were the first ones in the water on the first dive. The last ones out dove for over an hour along the touchdown reef. Uh, came home with a couple of lionfish off of that reef. Then uh, we went on another reef called Horseshoe and I got more lionfish. And so I'm excited because we're going to go home and uh, Rachel's going to be really excited because she's going to see uh, these lionfish and we're going to eat them later on today so we had a great day i mean the boats were loaded there were 26 divers on the boat but we just were the first ones in the last ones out on both dives each dive took over an hour good weather lots of fun just relaxing in the current and going up and down uh, we saw an amazing sea turtle some moray eels just had a lot of fun so it was a great day Shout out definitely to Captain Brad on the Black Pearl at South Florida Diving. Uh, if you come down here, make sure you go out on a boat that Captain Brad is the captain of because uh, he is amazing. He knows how to drop you right on top of the reef. And if you tell him, hey, I need this depth or I want to go with lobster, he knows where to drop you off. So had so much fun. I'm going to head home right now and show off our lionfish to Rachel. Okay, let's take a look at these lionfish. Um, most of them are pretty small, but killing any lionfish is always a good thing. I have this zookeeper. That keeps them from stinging me, so we're just going to go ahead and just take this top off. Ooh, we got a nice big one there. Look at that one. So we got that one. The rest of them are kind of small, but that's okay because, again, 
kill all the lionfish. We're gonna go ahead and pull these out. We'll get them over onto the cutting board and then uh, I'll show you them more in detail. I do have these Kevlar gloves, but I'm still gonna use care because these are venomous fish. So let's take a look at these lionfish. So we've got four of them here. I had another one that I speared, but when I was trying to put him into the zookeeper, he got away, but I'm sure an eel is going to get him. He won't survive very long. Doesn't matter because we wanna kill all the lionfish because they are bad for the ecosystem here in Florida and they produce a lot of eggs. So I got four different ones. This guy's a pretty decent size, though I've seen him a little bit bigger. Uh, this guy is a decent size I and mean, you're not gonna get a lot of meat, but we'll get enough. This guy's not too bad. This is a baby, but again, kill all the lionfish. Uh, so like I was saying, these are venomous. They're not poisonous, they're venomous. And they have these spines along here. And you can see, I think there's 13 spines. And if you take a look right here, that is the barb. And if you get stabbed with that barb, even when they're dead, you're gonna have a bad day and it's gonna hurt for a while. Heat will help. There's also a couple of spines down in here on their fins. And I believe there's a couple down in here as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these spines off. Now, some people actually fillet them with the spines on and just use care. For me, I've got Kevlar gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the spines and then I don't have to worry about accidentally stabbing myself. Okay, so we got this one here and what I'm gonna do is just, the venom is only in that uh, little tip. So I'm just gonna use these scissors and cut off everything. I'm just gonna cut off the whole fin and I don't have to worry about anything, making sure I don't miss anything. I'm gonna cut off these bottom ones. I'm gonna cut off these. Get that one off. And then come over here to the other side. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make sure I didn't get anything. Now, this is a little sharp here, but there's no poison in there. I'm just gonna use some care because we're gonna fillet off from here anyway. I just wanna make sure I don't have any of the spines still on here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with all of the fish. Okay, now that I got all the spines off, I'm going to use extreme care and get rid of these. Now, it's funny, I have seen some people actually take these spines and they put them in the oven and they roast them for a little while and they make toothpicks because the heat will neutralize the uh, poison or the toxin that's in there. And uh, you have to actually inject yourself with it, but we're not gonna go there. We're just gonna go ahead and throw all of this out. Okay, I am going to attempt to fillet this on camera, but I'm not very good at this, and especially on camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a very light cut right here. I'm gonna go from here to right below his belly, right here where his entrails are and stuff. So we're gonna go down like that. And I'm just trying to break the skin here because what I wanna do is pull off the skin. The idea behind this is I'm trying to, and these aren't huge, so it's a little bit more difficult. Not gonna be a lot of meat. But what I'm trying to do is just cut through the skin, not into the meat yet. Now I can just grab this skin and peel it off. A little piece of meat stuck on there right there. Now I don't have to scale it. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this meat off. So what I'm gonna do is right over here, right over the bone, I'm just gonna very small cuts. Following along the bone, and just keep lifting it up. Now what I can do is just right along the backbone, nice and slow, because again, this is a it's a small fish. There's not a lot of meat here. But it was fun to actually spear him. Well, there you go. Got a little bit of lionfish here. Definitely not a lot. Definitely not enough for an entire meal. Like more like a little appetizer. But it doesn't matter to me because for me, 
it was all about getting off the couch, getting out there, enjoying underwater, the thrill of going along the reef, finding them, spearing them, then, you know, coming home and showing them off to Rachel. And then, of course, the added benefit of helping to eliminate an invasive species here in our Florida water. So uh, I'm going to put these in the refrigerator. We're going to cook them up in a little while. Just a little bit of butter, saute them in a pan, and just uh, try lionfish for the first time. In addition to having the lionfish tonight, we're also going to have some beef ribs. So uh, Publix had these uh, rib roasts on sale, and I really like it when they put these on sale because when they do it, it's this gorgeous ribeye, but they've already got the bone attached. So a lot of people just tell them, take off the bone and keep it, but I want it because it makes a really good beef rib. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the ribs on this, and we're gonna season them up with some Redmond seasoning, and then we're gonna cook them in the Inova Precision Oven in sous vide mode. And then what I can do is take the rest of this, and I'm gonna slice it up on my meat slicer and turn it into a bunch of carnivore chips. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take this out of the package. Now, I actually already have another beef rib that um, I took out the other day. So between the two of them, we will have enough food. Um, but so simply remove this here. And the way your butcher prepares it may be a little bit differently. Ours is using these like elastic ties. But see what I love about the when Publix does it is look at this. They've already separated the ribs from the meat. So all I got to do is just take this knife and you don't even need a big one and cut it down like this. Now I can take this and prepare it for carnivore chips. So what I'll do is I'll come over here. I'm going to put them on my tray. And unfortunately, we are out of Redmond organic garlic pepper. So we're going to use the lemon pepper instead. So I'm simply going to cover these ribs completely with it and rub it in. And now I don't really worry about the bone because nothing's really going to penetrate here, but I do want to get some of this meat right here. Sometimes we'll actually use some mustard to get it to stick, but since I'm cooking it in the sous vide, I don't worry about that as much because this is going to set right into the meat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these over to the Innova oven and stick them in there. The reason I'm cooking in the Innova oven today is we have a lot going on and I want to be able to sous vide them and not have to worry about it. What's really cool is I can put this in there at the temperature. It can go for four hours or it could go for 14 hours. You're not going to overcook them. But if you don't have the Innova oven, you could also do this with a stick sous vide or you can cook them in an oven or a smoker. If you're going to cook them in an oven or a smoker, you want to put it in there at about 225 degrees and you're going to go till you have an internal temperature of about 200 degrees. That's where you're going to get that fall off the bone texture. So let's stick these into the oven. So we simply open up our oven. We're going to put them in there. It doesn't matter what rack. Press it on. I've already got it set for sous vide and I'm going to set it to 211.5 because I'm lazy and I don't want to adjust anything. And I have it at 100% humidity. And now we hit start. And that's it. These will probably take about three hours. Uh, but we're just going to let them go. We'll come back and check them in a little while. Okay, so we've got our ribs up to temperature. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put this on like an air fry mode. And that'll put just a little bit of a crust onto the ribs, just like if you were grilling it. So about another three to five minutes and the ribs will be done. Why can't you ever wait for me? Because the food's so good. <laughs> Wow. It is dinner time. What a feast. And today is feast day. It looks like feast day. It, it looks like feast day. So what do we have here? First of all, we have the lionfish that oh I caught gosh. with my spear. Now, I didn't get a lot of meat. We got to try it. Though. But it's something. Okay, you ready? So what I did was I just cooked this in a little bit of butter and garlic. That's Perfect. all I did. Cooked very, very quickly. Oh, my gosh. Now, they said it was sweet, but they were, like, underselling it. That is delicious. That doesn't, I don't like fish. That doesn't even taste like fish. That is absolutely mm. delicious. I wish I wouldn't have given you more than I got. Uh, right. Well, would you like some? No, I mean, you're you the hunter. Have, you have it. You can have it. Wow. Wow. Makes me want to hunt more invasive species. Well, you're going to be going scuba diving. Maybe we can wow. get more. Wow. 
Got to hit it with some more salt. We got to go out. So you're going to have to come. Because we need somebody to film it. That but is. We got to go out to the 50 or 60 foot reefs. Who knew? If you want to get the big ones. If you go out to the 40 to 60 foot reefs, there's some that'll give you like one and a half pounds, two pounds of meat out there. But they like the deeper water. That is not a fishy fish. It's very nice and flaky. I, I could get used to eating that. No wonder. I mean, it's not cheap. When we go to the fish it's market. It's very difficult to find. I mean, they do sell it in some of the stores, but it's like hit or miss when they're going to have it. But when they have it, yeah, it's it's like $30 mm. a pound. I went to one place that had it, and it, it was like over $30 a pound. And wow. I'm like, yeah, I want to try it, but I don't want to try it that bad. Like, that's more money than most steaks. You know? I could eat this stuff all day long. Now, what we got here? Okay, so we've got... Oh, you get the shrimp. So we've got some shrimp, and I basically made this shrimp using the recipe for the pina colada. Right. I'll leave a link for that up here. That's the video we did, like the coconut crusted shrimp. Really good. But I used orange mango. I am very interested to see how this worked out. So it's like orange mango coconut. Okay. You ready? Dink it. Dink. Oh. That's better than a pina colada. That is good. Oh my gosh, that's good. I gotta see if I can take it over the top. That is better than pina colada. Now, I did mm. shallow fry it in some coconut oil. We liked it better with the coconut oil. I like it better with the coconut and oil. And these ones that are thicker, I tried double battering them. Okay. Wait, what are you doing? So what I did was I dumped it in the egg wash. I covered it mm. in the batter, and then I put it back in the egg wash to get even more breading. And you can see that really nice, thick layer of breading. Wow. That is freaking money. Wow. Mmm. Oh, the orange and the mango, because I love mango. I miss mango. What was your favorite fruit pre-keto? For me, it was mango. We had a mango tree. We had a mango tree. I actually cut down the mango tree because I was so tempted by it. Actually, the real reason I cut it down was so we can get the RV in the backyard, but... <gasps> Would you put this on with a vice grip? The thing is, is that, like, mangoes are very high in sugar, and I was a person... I, I would eat, like, four mangoes in a day. I miss mango, but this, this really, the mango flavor... It is so nice and tropical. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Talk about, like, surf and turf for real. Wow. Okay, so these were some leftover wings. Yesterday, I just wanted some wings. We had gone to Publix to get some stuff, and they have these things called Mardi Gras rings and wings, and I'm always kind of like, if they have them, I'm having wings. If they don't, I'm not getting them. Right. I, I'm, not, I'm not eating wings today. It's very rare that they have them, and they're not the cleanest, but they're really good. Well, they had these, and these were baked lemon pepper wings. And the ingredients on this were very good. And they're tasty. Mm-hmm. So. Super tasty. There are about eight of them left over. I just threw them in the air fryer to reheat them. Yep. That's really good. I'm enjoying this dinner. Mm -hmm. We got a lot left. You ready? You ready? So, mm -hmm. here's our ribs. Look at those beef ribs. There's actually one more still over there. And this is just in the sous vide. It took about an hour and a half. And look at that. It comes right off the bone. I mean. And I see you got some barbecue sauce the over there. The bone is just like completely clean. Now, again, we usually use the garlic pepper. Ding. But we didn't have any more. Mmm. The lemon actually brings a nice freshness. That's and good. the fact that we've paired it with other tropical tastes. That's good. Gives it a real like tropical beef, you know, kind of flavor, like a mojo type of flavor, which I actually really like. Mm -hmm. Man. And then you're finishing them out with jalapeno, jalapeno poppers. Jalapeno poppers, that's the last bite. Do you, or do you plan your meal like with the last bite? Yeah, what is your last bite gonna be? My last bite? What do you think? It, it's definitely, I don't know. I, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna eat my beef because we always start like eat your meat first. Mm -hmm. As much as I want those jalapeno poppers, I'm gonna eat my meat. We already ate our fish. I'm gonna eat my shrimp. I may then go with jalapeno poppers before wings because okay. I wanna make sure I have enough room for the jalapeno poppers. 
but I probably should eat the wings first because again, meats before treats and as far as I'm concerned, jalapeno poppers are a treat. Me so too. what is this barbecue sauce you got? Mm. It is the Carolina Gold. This is the sweet chili, but like oh, okay. the Carolina Gold version of Sweet Baby Ray's. And I really like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's delicious. We're about to head out soon to Texas. You talking about some good barbecue. We'll be living in Jack in uh, Terry Black's. That's, Absolutely. That's where you're looking for us in Austin. We're probably across the street in we're Terry probably Black's. Probably eating meat. Yeah. So, okay. We're going to finish eating because we do have uh, some other things we need to do. It's been a busy day of filming, mm -hmm. uh, a busy day of going, you know, scuba diving. So, I'm, I'm really excited to just sit down. I want to enjoy this meal me too check out some of the other videos that we mentioned in today's vlog uh, now if you like seeing videos like this take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there also make sure you take a look at the most recent videos i'm going to put right over here but whether you head this way or you head this way don't forget to head this way subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we feast you'll be alerted to it till next time bye, bye.